Good morning. This is Jason Dean coming live at you again for another Film Fanatic show. So today's show is another uh, video in kind of the continuation of all of the movies of Stanley Kubrick. I, you know, he is my favorite director of all time. I started out this whole series where I think I pretty much focused on The Shining. But then I decided, you know, it's it's made me obviously think again about all of his films, the impact that Kubrick's work has had on on me personally, but then how influential he was on so many other so many other directors. And just, you know, I'm always enamored by the genius of Kubrick. He is such a source of of not only do I love his films to death but I just, I'm always continually uh, inspired by him personally. And also when it comes to, you know, for what it is, creating our, my own original work, I am very, very much inspired by him. I always um, driven by his sense of perfection his sense of the sense that he had when he was working on films and and all of the work that he created the sense of detail and the timelessness of his of his work and along with his craft you know there's no there's nothing really at all that is dated if you watch any of his films these days in 2023 you know they might as for me they might have might as well have come out this this year. They they just have a freshness to them and they're just so incredibly unique. And you know the thing is too which is a thing that artists I think in general try to try to find or struggle with to 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 find their own identity when you can see, you know, it can be you know if you see uh, a certain film by a director or it could be a band that you really love and you listen to you know numerous albums of theirs or you see numerous films by a particular director or a writer or you know it could be in any any area of the arts but when when you start to see that a particular artist has a certain kind of style in their own personality to me that is you know I think from the artist's perspective, that's like one of the most liberating things because, you know, and it, and it doesn't really, it goes a little bit beyond of whether or not the public will love it or, or hate it or just, you know, just kind of dismiss it. At the end of the day, you know, whether you like it or you don't like it, it still has a uniqueness to it and it's got the stamp of that particular artist. Like you can see a certain style. They, they have their personality all over that work. And to me, that is so awesome. You know, it's that, it's that, it's that classic, those classic quotes, you know, the classic quote of, good composers borrow, great composers steal. You know, because we're collectively, individually, you know, if we're involved with the arts and whatever we do, we're obviously a sum of all of our parts. We're influenced by, you know, many, many things. And and hopefully all of those influences, you know, will come come out in their own unique way. You know, you have artists and musicians that will basically copy a particular thing, or maybe they will, to a degree, cash in on certain trends of the time or a particular style where it will be a movie or a film or a, an album or a certain sound will be all of a sudden this new kind of fresh thing and it's a new idea and you obviously have people who kind of jump on a bandwagon and it might not be say from a 
from a genuine place. It could be about trying to capitalize on a particular thing. But when certain artists, you know, adapt those, more or less those same kind of uh, concepts or, or, or ideas of creating things, eventually, you know, they could, it, it can come out in its own unique way and suddenly that person or that artist is coming maybe into it into his his into his um onto, onto his own style and it creates a unique you know kind of personality and it represents that person uh, in that personality i just think that that's you know amazing you know i think like you know when i see kubrick's films i see his style i i can recognize it from the minute i watch one of his films and i for me and i it's interesting just on sunday i was talking to a friend about kubrick and about movies and we were uh we had just got done playing a gig and he had you know we started talking about random things and then we were talking about movies and other things and he said oh i know you're really you know really really into movies and that's your you know one of your biggest passions He's like, so what do you, you know, who's, you know, what are your favorite directors? And I, and I said, you know, right off the get-go, I had said, well, Stanley Kubrick is my favorite director of all time. And I was, we were going to start talking about, you know, other directors and other things, but we kind of got stuck on that. And it was interesting. And I, you know, for me, it's a style for when I, such a unique style that he pre presented. Because I've like really little you know, really, really have taken that deep dive and explored a lot of things of his career, I see his style in every film. And I attribute it his, to his, like, incredibly unique background, you know, where he, and I was telling my friend this, like, his incredibly unique background on how he got into film, where, you know, his background, he got into becoming a director uh, pretty late in life, and he started out as a professional photographer he you know he worked for look magazine as a photographer for quite a few years and you know during that time he had no interest in working you know uh, aspirations of becoming a filmmaker uh he had no experience making films but he had an obvious obviously he was an artist at that time and he was a photographer and also his other you know, one of the other unique things about his background was that he was also a professional uh, chess player. And he made a living because he was a New Yorker for many, many years until he eventually moved to England later in life. But for years, he lived in New York City and he was born in New York and he was a professional chess, chess player and he made his living playing chess in Central Park. And it wasn't until he went to a, a friend of his had got, invited him to this film festival. <clears throat> his friend at the time was a filmmaker, and he went to uh, his his friend had invited him to a film festival. And Stanley Kubrick came out of that situation feeling like I can make something better. I can make I can make something that's head and shoulders above everything that I just saw, and that was the key motivating factor for him to become a filmmaker. Which to me, every time I think of that or I talk about it with people, is so unique and so um, so different than any other way uh, that I that I hear of an artist, you know, diving into their respected craft. Like, just so unique. So every time I see one of his films, I see all of those attributes, especially the visual element, and I attribute that to his background in cinematography uh, or his background in photography. I, he's got a very specific visual sense and aesthetic. So I see that all the time when I see his films. And because of his extensive chess background, I see his incredible focus on, on detail and also strategy. And as a, a filmmaker you know as a director you know i've said it many times before i feel like from an um from an artistic standpoint you know where when you're talking about expressing an idea i feel like directing the film 
directing a film is the most um, complete and immersive experience that a person can have. You know, because it's dealing with the visual, it's de dealing with the intellect to a degree, but with a narrative story and the the sound design, it's hitting all of the senses all at once. So I feel like film is the most glorious craft that there is as far as completely immersing the viewer in in a completely new world and experience. It's not just one particular thing. It's not just the experience of like looking at a really nice piece of art or looking at a beautiful photo or listening to an amazing album or going to a really great concert or reading a great book. To me, a great film is all of those things all in one. And so I also feel like because of that, it's so complex. And when the director is in that chair directing a film, they're that director is wearing so many hats at the same time. There's so many different things, so many different departments that that person has to worry about all at once. And I also feel not only is it the, the highest and the highest form of artistic expression, it's also the hardest. Um, I, you know, I had a look for what it's worth. I have a, some experience working on film and video and as hard as it was and as great as it was, I the biggest thing that I came away from that whole experience is realizing how incredibly hard it is and how just complex it is. And it gave me a whole new... new a whole, I, I gained a whole new respect for, for filmmakers. And it wasn't until I tried to, you know, live in that world for a while where I realized, wow, like this, this is incredibly hard. I don't know how films to a degree ever get made because of all of the things that the filmmakers have to worry about. And that's not even, you know, I'm not even talking about all the other things of where, you know, where you have problems the direct certain directors have problems with studio interference you know budgets all of this all of these other things that are kind of on the outside of the, the actual process of making that film it's incredible it's an incredible thing and i've always felt you know every time like when i was talking to my friend on sunday about it when i see a kubrick film i see all those elements all lined up and to me that gave him such uh an incredible um, and, and such an incredibly unique voice, you know, and so I, I, every time I see one of his films, I identify with that right away because of his unique background. So, <clears throat> that being said, today's, the next movie that I'm going to be uh, talking about is another classic, and that is Spartacus. I have this on Blu-ray. I have... <clears throat> pretty decent amount of Kubrick films on Blu-ray. I don't have as many as I want. Um, I have Eyes Wide Shut. I have The Shining. I have 2001 A Space Odyssey. I have Clockwork Orange. I have Full Metal Jacket. And I have Spartacus. The rest I don't own. And, and you know, that's definitely... All those other films are you know on my radar to, to eventually buy them. And Spartacus is such a unique movie in Kubrick's career. This film has like, you know, I still think it's an incredible film. I still think it's an epic movie. Uh, I think it's, you know, I, I always think of this as a Kubrick film. But there, the film was has kind of a black cloud around it to a degree. This is the only film that Kubrick, at the end of the day, wanted his name removed from the film. He was not, he was not happy, and it's notorious that the stories around it, he was not happy with the outcome. Meaning that he kind of was hired, and everything 
was kind of set in stone by the studio beforehand. It was all written. Everything was conceived. He didn't really have any flexibility as far as incorporating, you know, his own thing and his own interpretation of, of the work. The other really interesting thing about this movie was the story was for Spartacus was written by Dalton Trumbow, who was famously, um, he was a, a famous writer in Hollywood at the time, and he was blacklisted for his supposed ties to, to, be, to be being a communist, and his career was destroyed. So it had that as part of the, this, and you know, the other thing, Spartacus went on to win multiple uh, Academy Awards. And Kubrick was, more or less during the whole period of, of this film, kind of at war with the studios. You know, he tried, and m most of the time he was unsuccessful to, you know, to try to really a bend and shape and have more of an influence on the film. And it came out in 1960. And at the end of the day, he was so disgruntled with the film in that he couldn't really... have more artistic control he he actually went as far as wanting to have his name removed from the film so you know out of the the glorious body of work that kubrick has this movie is i don't know i think it's almost like the black sheep of the family it's kind of the odd man out but that being said i still think i still think that this movie is is pretty amazing I still love this film. I bought this Blu-ray. And so technically I look at it, even though it's very, like I said, I described it as almost like the black sheep of the family. It's kind of the odd man out. And Kubrick, after all, wanted his name removed from the from the from the this project. I still regard it as a as a classic movie, and I still regard it as a classic Kubrick film. Um I bought this on Blu-ray uh last year. And the transfer of this film is amazing. And of course, the other really wild and interesting thing around this was Kirk Douglas at the time was a big star. And he also had lots of uh, confrontations with Kubrick. There, it's been pretty documented that, you know, at the time, they Kubrick and, and, and Douglas had many uh, confrontational things on set about the direction of the film. So Kubrick the entire time was under, you know, a hu huge amounts of stress during the entire film. Not only was he struggling with the executives and, you know, trying to get more of his voice put on the big screen, but he was also at odds with the star of the film. So... You know, very interesting history, but at the end of the day, I still think that this is a is an incredible movie. And of course, this is like a classic tale, and it's based on some true accounts of Spartacus being a slave, and he he leads this revolt during the Roman Empire, and you know, and it's you know, the Blu-ray transfer of this film is is pretty incredible. Um, It's, you know, I, I definitely consider this film to be one of the first films that's like a true epic experience. Uh, you know, on a, every, everything is just so larger than life. But, you know, I can't help but not include this movie, you know, in, in this whole thing that I've been doing of where I'm wanting to cover all of Kubrick's films. I still have a ways to go. But I love this film, and I needed to, I feel like I needed to include it. You know, again, this this Blu-ray is an amazing transfer. Um, it's, this would be a, a wonderful film to see on the big screen. It's uh, truly one of the classic, like, American epics. And, um, you know, I think probably one of the best roles of Kirk Douglas, um, Probably, it might be also like his most iconic role. 
but I love this movie to death, and it's so damn good. I'd love to, I need to watch this again, but all of those controversies aside, I still, like I said, I, I include this very much so in the, the canon of Kubrick, and I still feel like even though he, you know, he was under lots of restraint and under immense amount, uh, immense, immense amounts of, or just a tremendous amount of pressure during the making of this film, I still feel like when you watch it, you can still see it being, uh, it still feels like a Kubrick film. So, tremendous, tremendous movie. So this is Jason Dean, and I highly recommend, uh, you know, if you're wanting to check out all of these Kubrick films I'm talking about, maybe there's some you've seen or haven't seen, I definitely say, definitely check out Spartacus. It's, it's, a, it's a classic. So thanks again, and we will see you next time. Peace.